Teachers Walk, Mr. McScruggy from Houston, Texas, and Ms. Perry from Boston, Massachusetts are about to have their lives changed. What? Down, you punks! Good morning, class. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Okay, so today we're going to talk about, since yesterday's lecture was on kinetic energy and potential, today we're going to talk about the conservation of momentum. So, Basically, what that means is that there's no friction or air resistance, so momentum is conserved. So we know mass is gravity. And that's what causes you to have weight. You have weight. You're not. You have a problem with me? You have a problem with me? You have a problem with Mr. McScruffy? Yeah. So you have to class. We will start by writing the simple equation that I'm sure you guys know. So. Let's start. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. So when you have two masses at different velocities, for momentum to be conserved, they're supposed to be. Okay, so let's start with inelastic collisions. Inelastic collisions mean that whenever two masses um, collide, they will stick together. And your homework will be over this, so I'm glad all of you are taking notes. Einstein's theory of relativity, all wrong. It's not E equals mc squared. That's completely wrong. It's e equals mv. Where b is the combustion force. Now who can tell me, if I give you 1,000 minutes for something that goes this, no one? God, you guys are idiots. Okay, so I will show you an example. And... So while we're waiting for this to load, I'll pass out some homework. So whenever they actually collide, they'll stick together in their final velocity. Well, the velocity of the form is 0.5, so the final velocity will be 0.5. And their initial velocity was 1 meters per second. So now how about we try the mass of the second part, we make it smaller. So what do you think this will, what do you think the final velocity will be? Smaller or larger? Larger. Well, momentum is good, sir. But it will be larger. So that's all for today, class. And I hope you guys have a good weekend. And don't forget to turn in your homework on Monday. Thank you, ma'am. Two teachers. Two weeks. One swap. So we will start with a lesson in physics today. We will do kinetic energy and potential energy. So, Anybody? Okay. Like that little bunny on TV, right? 
Huh? That's a little bummy on TV. No. Drama. Energized by the yeah, no. that one. There you go. No, that's not it. Okay. So kinetic energy is the energy, it depends on the movement, and potential energy depends on position. So how about we start with a simple equation where if energy is conserved, you have kinetic energy plus potential. Where are you going? Wait, where are you going? Stop. Okay, so I hope you guys start behaving and you're not like your classmate. Okay, so kinetic plus potential energy is equal to zero when energy is conserved in the system. So, what kinetic and potential energy are, you have to separate them into final and initial energy. Are any of you taking notes? John, stop. What? Morning. Morning, kids. I'm Mr. Treffy. I'll be teaching you physics today. God, this is comfy. How this back from school? Rolly chair. Rolly chair. Ooh, Mark, this thing looks comfy. Yes, it is. Rolling chair pal on lesson today. Lightsabers. I guess we can talk about light. Lightsabers are just really one kind. You know what? It's my lightsaber. Yourself, kid. All right, so um, light, stuff that makes you see. Um, it comes from stuff like the sun and light bulbs. Yeah.
Yep, and that's pretty much all you need to know about light. What? Come from the sun and light bulbs. Light. Can we start on something more academy? Wait, what is light? The stuff that makes you see. And what's that? You know, the rays of light that come from like stuff that, like candles, when you light a match, causes stuff, darkness to go away. You know? Who wants to go? Pick a spot. Wherever it's light. And potential energy is equal to MGH, where G is 9.8, gravity, height, H is the height, and M is the mass. Okay, is anybody taking notes at all? I have any paper. You should have come to the class. Does anybody actually have a pencil and want to take notes? Do you have a pencil? No, I'm taking notes on my Okay. Well, if you fail the test, it's not going to be my fault, okay? I'm doing my best. Okay. Can I stop talking? I'm teaching class. Stop talking. Two days attention for you, and one day attention for you. Oh. Okay. If you don't want to learn, then why are you even here? If you come to school, you put some effort, okay? I'm tired of you guys. Forgot to draw eyes on the squid, bird. I'm sorry, but I can use it. Thank you. Okay. Squid doesn't have to be. That classroom was so cool. It had lights that just, when you walked in, the class just turned on magically. And like, the computers, we had technology. I never got a computer in my classroom. And the rolling chair, the rolling chair was so awesome. I mean, the kids, yeah, sure, the kids were okay, I guess. They're slightly annoying asking questions. I mean, I'm doing my job here. I'm trying to teach these kids as best as possible, you know? Give them the education they deserve. Good class. Well, when I came in, they were—they didn't care about going to school. I was really disappointed. I didn't see like their motivation. Like with my other class at school, I can usually tell they're motivated. They want to learn. They ask questions. These students—they sat in the back. They didn't pay attention. They were talking, throwing stuff. It wasn't what I expected at all. It was really sad. And what did you? How did you feel about the classroom? Uh. I, I can see why they're not learning much, because the classroom, there's no technology. In our school, we have computers, so we can show them animations, 
or videos, but they have absolutely no technology. They have chalkboards, which they are not as good as whiteboards, so that's distracting. And the classrooms are dirty, they're old, they're boring, so the kid was falling asleep in class, you know. Okay. Yes. Class, 